Hi, I'm Monica and let's talk about some books that are like sunshine itself. So ignore the dramatic title, I just wanted a nice catching title for my springtime book recommendations video. And in this video, I'm going to be mentioning books that really made me smile and that brought more joy into my life. I have selected five different books that made me happy to read and I hope they do the same for you. Let's just get right to the first one, which is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This one is a rom-com that I absolutely had such a delightful time reading. We're following Hannah Brooks, who is a bodyguard. And I love the change from the bodyguard being typically a man is now a woman. Hannah is assigned to protect whoever her agency points her at. But this time, she is assigned to protect a high-profile Hollywood actor, Jack Stapleton. This book is set at Jack's Texan home branch, and there his mother is ill but he needs a bodyguard because he may have some over-obsessive fans. And Hannah, to keep the rules for Jack's mother, poses to be Jack's girlfriend. Let me just start off by saying that this book would be perfect for a rom-com movie. There were so many over-the-top moments and funny scenes that had me laughing out loud and smiling. Of course, if I'm talking about a rom-com movie, I'm going to be talking about some romance tropes that we get. This one has a swoony romance, there is forced proximity and fake dating. There was very very good chemistry between our main couple, Hannah and Jack, and I really didn't like how this lighthearted romance was paired with more serious familial dynamics. I really do think that The Bodyguard would be a perfect vacation or road trip read. Next, I chose another contemporary book and this is The Bad Bookshop of Maggie Banks by Shauna Robinson. Set in a small town known for its literary success of Edward Bell, Maggie is helping her best friend Rochelle to run Rochelle's bookstore while she is giving birth to her second child. However, the bookstore is restricted to selling books that are only published before 1968, so they only sell classics. And this is due to Ralph Bell, who wants to protect the legacy of his grandfather. And Maggie, she doesn't really care because this is a temporary gig for her while she is job hunting. This book was very unexpected and a very surprising delight to me, and that is mainly due to Maggie, our main character. She's very charismatic, and she has quite a distracted mind, and she's yearning for something that she can't put her finger quite on just yet. We follow Maggie's journey to discover her passion. Honestly, I just love a book about books. There are mentions of serious topics, but they're not super in-depth, but there is the mention of banned books, which Maggie then goes against, and she secretly sells modern books and not classics to the town's book. I loved Maggie for her creative solutions to try to go behind this one guy who is essentially controlling the town's economy. She came up with really creative ideas. There is a romance factor in this book with Malcolm. I really like them together. It's the steady sort of relationship that is very grounded and stable, so it's not all too exciting, but I think Malcolm is what Maggie needs. Overall, this book was still very, very enjoyable to read with comedic moments and highlights the small fights that people may go through. Next on this list is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This one is a fun adult contemporary romance book. It deals with ultra-rich, wealthy Asian families. <laughs> We're following Rachel Chu, who agrees to go to Singapore with her boyfriend, Nicholas Young. However, in Singapore, she discovers that her boyfriend is actually from a very prestigious and wealthy family. We're talking private jets, mansions, $25,000 designer clothes. <laughs> and Rachel, of course, is shocked, but she is willing to put in the work to get to know Nicholas's family. And Nick is actually the heir to the family's fortune. I loved reading about Rachel's shock at discovering and how wealthy her boyfriend actually is and being exposed to this world of wealth and really being thrown into a world where appearance is everything and really money is their bread and butter. <laughs> Typically, I don't like satire, but I feel like in this book, I really enjoyed it. It was a fun time. And it doesn't hurt that there is authentic Asian representation. There is so much melodramatics and drama and gossip. And honestly, some parts are really upsetting for Rachel. But this book was really fun. And I do highly recommend you to check out the Crazy Rich Asians movie if you haven't yet. 
and I'm still waiting on when we're gonna get the sequels because I feel like it's been so long since the movie came out. I highly recommend Crazy Rich Asians if you're looking for a girl that discovers that her boyfriend is a billionaire essentially. <laughs> And of course, I did want to add on at least one fantasy book onto this list and I chose Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This one is a YA fantasy standalone, so don't worry about starting a new series. I feel like this one is the type of fantasy that brings me comfort. In this world, there are magical grimoires that can attack you at a moment's notice and they also have emotions. We're following Elizabeth Scrivener who is a warden of the Great Libraries. She was brought to the Great Library as an orphan and now she takes care of these magical grimoires. Again, another book about books, so I love it. <laughs> there are also sorcerers in this world. They are powerful magicians who gain their magic from demons and they are invading Elizabeth's world. Elizabeth does encounter one sorcerer, Nathaniel, who is different than what she thought a sorcerer would be like and he helps her with a murder mystery. Our characters are very headstrong and they really drive the plot forward into a very satisfying conclusion. There are also hints of political intrigue and maneuvering around set laws in this world. So it's a lot of figuring out what they can do without getting in trouble with the government. I love the whimsical adventure that this book took me on and it's actually long overdue for a reread so I need to get on that. Lastly, we have another rom-com and this one is the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. We're following Sloane whose fiance passed away two years ago and she's having some trouble getting her life back to normal. On the anniversary of Brennan's death, Sloane is visiting his grave and almost hits a dog. And this dog also jumps into her car and his name is Tucker and Sloane takes this as a sign from her fiance to stop being so antisocial. Sloane does try to contact the owner of the dog but there is no response for weeks but having this new companion by her side is already making her feel so much better. But Tucker belongs to Jason who is a up-and-coming famous musician and is currently on tour in Australia and he wants his dog back. The beginning of this relationship is long distance however both Jason and Sloane are very flirty and they build a strong connection. When they finally meet in person, sparks fly and we read about a very sweet and loving romance. I loved how there were different layers to this relationship that made it more realistic. First, we have Sloane healing her grief. Then we also have the music industry being a huge part in this book. Almost being like a third party situation with our main couple and it added so much tension and drama to the story. There is a happy ending and I absolutely love that there was an emphasis on discovering your passions and following your passions and maybe you might find love along the way. Those were all the books for this list and I hope you found one or two to add to your book reading list for spring. And I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.